Let me put that there. Oh. Sorry. Are we on? We're on. You're, you're on, you're, Drew. You're off. I'm, I'm off. I'm off. I'm on now. Get rid of my gum. Good idea. All right. Welcome to Woody Middle Drumming uh, Lesson. Right? Woody yeah. Middle? Woody Middle. Woody. Yeah. You got it. Woody Middle. It's good. It's good. You're doing, doing yeah. great. Different dialects. <laughs> Different generations. All right. So we're going to work on Lesson 19 because that's the lesson I wanted to work on. And that's Flam Paradiddle. So first of all, make sure you got a pad, some sticks. You're in a very comfortable position. Uh, either standing up or if you're sitting down, you know, you don't want the pad up by your chest So you got all this weird stuff happen because what you're doing is you're practicing bad habits So try to practice good habits arms down by your side lift them up from the elbows BAM You want to be nice and relaxed like you're typing at that computer that you're watching this on exactly So this is actually an advanced etude. This is lesson 19 out of Dr. Throwdown's rudimental remedies all right lesson 19 Flam parad shameless promotion. Uh, flam paradiddles etude. So you wouldn't get to this etude until you've, you know, had s several of these rudiments mastered. Some of you I know have mastered your rudiments, so this sh shouldn't be uh, too difficult. However, we might touch on a few things that you go, "Wow, I didn't think of that," and that's what's great about this. So hopefully, there's something there for everybody. But first of all, in this etude, of course, there's flam paradiddles. But there's also flam taps, flam accents, seven stroke rolls, flam accues. I think that's it. Yeah. So we got a few other flam rudiments that you need to work on uh, prior to this. Those rudiments come before lesson 19. So by, by the time you get here, you should know them. All right, but we're going to take it really slow. Remember the motto, my motto, slow it down. Break it down so you can throw it down. So we're going to take it slow. We're going to break it down. Let's just talk about the flam paradiddle first, okay? So we're going to take a very slow flam paradiddle. It's a, a flam with a control stroke on the primary, upstroke, two taps. We want to be able to do this in a very slow motion. Let's do a flam paradiddle. Drew's going to do it with me. By the way, Drew has not worked on this etude on purpose because he's going to be learning it with you. So I think it's good that there's going to be, there might be a few things that he, he'll struggle on or not quite be know. Several. I, yeah, several. Yeah. So that we can show him and maybe you're having some of the same issues. Okay? So we're going to work on flam paradiddles. Very slow. We're just going to go flam a diddle. About that fast. But I want to play a control stroke, up stroke, two taps. And I want to stop right here. Okay? With the left, when we're done, let's start with the right stick up. Right stick up. At this tempo, one, two, ready, go. Flam, a, di, do. Okay, notice Drew's stick kind of popped up really fast. It wasn't smooth. Let's go back. Right hand. I want to get that left stroke really smooth. Because when we get going fast, we want to be smooth. Smooth as butter. Suave como mantequilla. Right? Smooth as butter. One, two, ready, go. Flam, a, di, do. Much better. Now, you see where my stick is? I can see in the camera. It's turned back a little further than Drew's. So turn your stick back a little bit. There. Perfect. Okay, let's do it from the left hand. Two. Ready. Go. Flam. A. Di. Do. Wonderful. Let's do two in a row. Right and left. Ready. Go. Flam. A. Di. Do. Flam. A. Di. Do. Perfect. Excellent. All right. Let's try to get it even smoother. What I want to do is get this almost like Tai Chi. Just really slow and then boom. And then that. Now. That control stroke, it's very important. Little thing on the control stroke. When you strike the drum, I want the stick below perpendicular. I mean, below parallel to the, or horizontal. Perpendicular, horizontal. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Okay, so horizontal. I want the stick below horizontal. So if this is horizontal, as soon as you play a control stroke, you want that stick slightly below it. So you can control that tap. If it's up, the taps are going to be out of control and too loud. Okay? Let's try it again. Let's do let's do four of them. Ready? Two. Ready? Go. Flam a di do. Flam a di do. Flam a di do. Flam a di do. Okay. Play the last flam. All right. So now let's try flam accents because we have that in there as well. Flam accents very similar to a flam paradiddle, except there's only three notes. We don't have the diddle. 
instead of, instead of right, left, right, right, it's just right, left, right, and then left, right, left, okay? So it's very similar, okay? So let's do that. The, 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 the accent stroke's going to be a little faster because we only have one tap instead of two. So let's try that. So right stick up. Let's just play flam accents. The second note still is an upstroke. Two, ready, go. Flam accent. Flam accent. Flam accent. Flam accent. Smooth as butter. We want to try and get that stroke smooth. No stopping, no hitches along the way. Okay? Flam and a boom. All right. Then there's one other rudiment in this first part. Flam taps. Well, there's two other seven stroke rule. Another flam root. Flam taps is a bounce root. It's a different stroke. All right, we're going to bounce the stick, then let it kind of decay on us. All right, so with flam taps, especially slow flam taps, I want to play these rudiments slowly the same way I'm going to play them fast. So in other words, I could play a flam tap like this with control strokes at a slow tempo. And there might be times when I want to do that. But for the purpose of practicing for speed and getting it smooth, I want to bounce them. So I'm going to just let them bounce kind of high when I play slow. Okay? There's not as much force on those accents as there are on the flam parados or the flam accents or even inverted flam taps. And that's okay. Not everything should sound the same. We don't want everything to sound the same. You want to listen to music that sounds the same all the time? The reason for the rudiments is it gives us, our, the different stickings gives us different articulations. We got one pitch. We got a drum. One pitch. We have to make some differences. So the difference between, say, flam taps and flam accents is that you use a different stroke for the accents, and it creates a different sound. We don't want our flam taps to sound like our inverted flam taps. Cool? All right, so let's let that bounce. Let's just play some slow flam taps. We start with the right stick up. We're just going to let it really bounce. Loosey goosey. I want you to play, here's the word, here's the word of the day. Sloppy. I want you to play really sloppy. Here we go. Jet, dot, jet, dot, ready, go. That's beautiful. It's beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. Sloppy. Smooth. It's sloppy. It's nice and smooth. Easy. Easy peasy. That should be really easy. Also, make sure all your flams are good flams. No flat flams. That's not a flam. That's a double stop. We call them flat flams. Why don't we just call them double stop? That's a double stop. And it's an awful sound on the drum. Pop. You get that pop. So try to make sure all your flams are good. Boom. And the spacing is the same. All right? So now we're going to try the first line. Our first two lines. Let's try the first two lines of the A2. So it has those three rudiments plus a seven stroke roll. Now we're going to do it slow, so that seven stroke roll is going to be about that tempo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can even count the notes. Pretty it's slow. so slow. Pretty slow. So jet, da, 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 jet, da, 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 jet. Here we go. One, you ready? Y'all got the A2 up? I hope you have the bullet. Get the bullet. Get the, okay, here we go. One, two, one, and play, and. Go to the left hand. So we got that repeat sign. That threw me. Threw you. Go back. Clearly did not practice. I'm not, a, I'm not a hero, but I did this for a video. So if you didn't repeat it, like Drew caught it the last Man, second, it uh, it's go, when you repeat it, it goes back to the left hand. We start on the left hand or follow with the right. Very important. Got to be able to leave with the left. Let's move on. We're going to move on, then we're going to play it with the track in a minute. All right. The next section is really cool. It's a little more complicated, but not really. It's uh, flam paradiddles, got flam taps. We do have a hybrid in there, and it's a flam -a -Q with a flam paradiddle sticking. So a flam -Q a diddle. That's a hybrid. It's two rudiments kind of mixed together. But hopefully this shows you 
kind of a way you can take these rudiments and use them creatively. So now the whole idea is to show you some creative ways to use the rudiments and then you take that to another level on your own. All right, but let's play this line. It's a little tricky. It's two, it starts out with two flam paradiddles, but with a 16th note rest between them. And then we have two flam taps with an accent on the first flam tap. Now the first, the accent on the flam tap, remember, don't slam it. Let it bounce. Now the third, the accent on the end of the flam taps, you can stick it. But you hear those two accents sound different? Cha-cha, cha-cha, cha Okay? In fact, when I see an accent on a diddle, I think of both notes as meaning accented. Or emphasized. Not really accented. More of an emphasis. Because it's a little different than a control stroke accent. Not as powerful. All right? Then we have another flam paradiddle on the left hand. And then we have a flam paradiddle on the right, but the accent's on the second note, like a flam All right? And then a six-stroke roll. So let's play that much. Let's play that much. Now, those two measures on the third one. I won't horn. say anything about six stroke roll yet. Here we go. Yes, yeah, so those two those two measures. Check it decka. Check it decka. Two. Ready. Go. Okay, you got it. I was hoping he wouldn't get it. So I could talk about it, but he got it. I'm gonna talk about it anyway. <laughs> The six stroke roll starts on the left. Most people, when we play this for the first time or reading that, they play. They want to play it starting on the right because it's just well, that's, that's your go-to thing, right? Yeah, most of the time you do play six stroke rolls on well, a lot of things on the right. Yeah, depends on you are, unless you're left hand. Okay, so let's do that one again. Let's do that again. Did you catch the accent on the flam a Q diddle and the 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 tap flam taps? Let's try that again. Two, ready, go. All right, we're breaking it down. We're slowing it down because in a minute we're going to throw it down. But you got to be patient and you got to be persistent. You got to go through the whole thing. Next line, we're moving on. Now, this is just a whole bunch of flam rudiments tied together. It looks complicated. It's not. I'm going to simplify it for you. If you know your rudiments, all you have to do is play two flam paradiddles, a flam a cue, a flam accent. Two more flam paradiddles, a flam accent, a flam tap, and then a flam paradiddle. Back to back. No stopping. That's what that line is. It's just a whole bunch of flam rudiments strung together. And it's going to sound funky, like a bow-legged monkey. All right? But that's what's cool about rudiments. you got to use them. I feel like there are a lot of bow-legged monkeys in your life. Uh, there are, you know. <laughs> Let's do it. T.O.P. I listen to too much T.O.P. All right. All right. Here we go. That that line. Here we go. Flam paradiddle, flam paradiddle, flam a cue, flam accent, flam paradiddle, flam paradiddle, flam accent, flam tap, flam paradiddle. And stop. We'll end on one. Here we go. Okay. Check it, tick it. Two. Ready. Go. And. Excellent. Good, good job on the flam tap. Most people want to slam that flam tap yeah. because they're playing all those control strokes. You come to the flam tap and they go, bow, and oh, it's out of time and it's uneven. So watch out. Gray, we got any questions yet? You guys have any questions so far? Let us know. Gray's here at the controls. And uh, even let us know where you're from. Yeah, tell us where you are. We want to know where you're from. We're, we're in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, Estados Unidos, United States of America. Right here in uh, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So where are you from? Let us know. All right, let's uh, let's do that those, that whole section, and we're going to do it twice. Okay. Okay. So that's four measures. That's line three of A two, nineteen. Here we go. Watch those flam taps. That's the tricky part. Left-handed six-stroke roll. A little reminder here, and then we we'll repeat it. Oh, yeah. But when you repeat it, it doesn't go to the left. It's still off the right. Still off the right. That's right. Here we go. Okay. Two, ready, play, and.
not bad. Flam tap the first time. You felt it? You forced it a little bit. The second bit. one, so well, you learned. I didn't notice that the first one was tense, but the second one felt better, if right. that makes any sense. Well, the I think you learned. You learned from it. One. You learned from it in the second one. You, yeah, it felt a lot better. So did you notice? All right, so a lot of you might be saying, this is really slow. This is easy. <laughs> no. But is it? Is it easy? Be honest. It's be not honest. Nice. It's not easy. Okay, are all your flams sounding the same? Did you play any flat flams? If you played one flat flam, then you played it wrong. Go back and fix it. Do it again until you can play that with no flat flams and that they're all consistent. Did you stroke that, fl that flam tap? Was it tense? Was it uneven? If so, go back and fix it. Okay, so we want this to be smooth. All right, and then the last two measures, simple. We're going to go ahead and play them. It's four flam paradiddles in a row and then a roll. I say simple, but I think the flam paradiddle is the most difficult of the 40 rudiments. Simple does not mean easy. No, it's not. But because you have four strokes in a row, flam paradiddle is the, is the most difficult to master. So this is a good, this last measure. And then the slow double stroke roll. So we're going to play that kind of high. Okay. You ready? Last two measures. Ready, play, and. Good. And that last roll, you really have to count because it's so slow. Yeah, that was tricky. I go one E and a two E and a three E and a four. All right, if I'm playing that fast, let's just go one, two, three, four. Right? Easy. Piece of cake. Slow, you really got to think about it and play it nice and even. Okay, we got it? Feeling good? Feeling, feeling strong? Feeling better than, than before. That's How are we true. doing? We're doing pretty good on time, too, right? Great. We got anybody talking to us? What do we got? Um, Owen from Louisiana wants to know, what is some advice or recommendations when auditioning for the percussion studio at USM School of Music? Oh, Owen. Owen wants to know... He needs some advice on auditioning at the uh, at, here at Southern Miss or anywhere else for that matter. Um, you know, let's uh, real quick. We'll just do a real quick thing. First of all, make sure all your flams are good. No flat flams. <laughs> Work on your rudiments. Just to start with. Um, but you know, when you go do an audition at a university, especially if you're a music major, Owen, you want to major in music. It's a time for you to show off. Everybody asks me, what should I play in your audi in my audition? And my answer is. If you don't know what to play for your audition, then that in itself isn't a very good audition. So I want you, you know, what, what anyone would expect is to hear what you do well. I certainly don't want to hear something you don't do well. If you've never played four mallets, then what makes you think I want to hear you play four mallets? It's a time for you to show off. So play the instruments you play. With that said, it's typical that somebody comes in and plays an orchestral snare drum etude, a rudimental snare drum etude, um, a, a two mallet solo on xylophone, vibraphone, or marimba, um, or, or four mallets if you play four mallets. Don't want to hear it if you don't. You know, so, and drum set as well, a, a variation of styles on drum set, maybe a transcription. Um, and timpani, a timpani etude. There's lots of timpani etude books you can find. Um, and, uh, the Free Sleep Pack, Lalo Davila's new timpani book, which is awesome with the tracks. Um, and then anything else. You know, I have students from all over the world that audition. From Trinidad, they come in and they're playing steel pan. That's the instrument they audition on because that's the instrument they play. All right? From uh, Honduras, and I've, I've had Maraca auditions come in and play Maraca. Uh, Honduran maracas, uh, uh, congas, timbali, tabla. If you don't play those instruments, then, then of course we don't want to hear them. So show off. That's the best advice I can give you for your audition. It's a time for you to go in and show off. Got another one? Yes. Okay. We've got one from Maurice. He wants to know, what are the subtle technical differences between German and American grip concerning different rudiments, sounds, etc., not the obvious hand angle? That's a good question. Between German and American grip, what would what, what make it sound different? They're very similar. German grip is an extreme uh, grip here with the hand over. Uh, there's various, there's various um, fulcrums, you know, the Swiss with the, the thumb on the side. Of course, here, what we generally do in America is thumb, thumb 
uh, instead of under on the, on the side. But an American grip would just be in here a little bit. Uh, it's, this is more of a, of a timpani um, term that we use. Uh, for a snare drum, it's, it's really not a term we use. I would say use the grip that, 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 that uh, is the best for you. Okay? Like, for example, I'll, let me say traditional grip and match grip. People say, you know, this is, they say this is an orchestral grip to play all your buzz rolls, you know, when you're playing orchestral excerpts to play match grip. Um, not for me. For me, it's traditional grip because my traditional grip sounds better on, on a, an orchestral drumming as well. So do what sounds best. Well, best. would it, I think what he's getting at too is, is it going to make much of a difference on a Kevlar head if you're playing with Germanic grip or American grip? Like not how much. Actually, not, how it actually not much of a difference, no. So no. It, would, it would It's more of more how, what you do with your hand. Yeah, it matter more on timpani, for sure. Gives you a darker sound if you play here than here. But on this drum, not, not much of a difference. Uh, I would just say, for any, for any drum, when you're playing, what we did earlier, drop your arms down by your side and lift them up from the elbows. You want to be as relaxed as possible, okay? So we want to, you know, drumming, rudimental drumming, drumming at all, especially when you're dealing with speed and endurance and power, is about efficiency, right? We want to be efficient. So the more relaxed we are, the better off we're going to be, okay? So, you know, when I see guys playing with their arm up like this, I just know that guy's just not going to last as long as somebody playing nice and relaxed. There's just no way. It's not physically possible. All right, so, and in fact, this was the problem with this. You know, we played, they played this. This is the reason we have traditional grip. See, to get over the rim, when the drum's slanted, I have to raise my arm up. So we came up with this underhand grip. Now we do this. You know, I see people doing this. Try to stay relaxed. That's the key, efficiency. All right, anything else? Gray. Okay, let's move on. We're going to go on. We're going to play this etude at tempo one. That's tempo del lerno. It's really slow, and what I got here, I just got a little, you know, a little Bose speaker hooked up, Bluetooth with the phone, and we're gonna play this. This is really slow. Hopefully, you have the music. If not, where can they get the music, Drew? At rudimentaldrumming.com, right under store. Boom. Boom. You can order it. You can order the book. We're gonna have. If you're a, if you're a member of woodymentaldrumming.com. The PDF of these of the music is going to be along with the videos in the lessons, so you can get it there as well, or you can get the book too. Well, well you, the book take you it get with the you. tracks. You the get the, book, oh you get yeah, the tracks. yeah, that's, that's right. Thing. We're not. We're, yeah, you got to get the. If you want the tracks, you got to get the books. It comes. Yeah, so do that. Do that. All right. Um, as we say in New Orleans, do that. All right. Now, here we go. Um, this is you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Let's do that. This is slow. One, two, ready and play, and. That's slow. Is that boring? Were you bored? I wasn't bored. I was no. thinking the entire time. I was on my toes having to think. 
That's not easy. And if you can get it smooth at that slow tempo, what do you think about playing it that slow? Well, I noticed I, a lot of, there were a lot of, the 16th note rests especially, I was jerky um, because it was slower. So the more time I had to think about it, you know, the more, right. the more time I have to mess it up instead of just doing it. Right. Okay. Yes. Five minutes. We got five minutes left. Any questions on that? Do you, do you have your pad? People playing along? Let us know if you're playing along. We would like to know who's playing along with their pad. You got your, your th throw down book, got it out, and you're playing along with us. Um, if you don't, this is, of course, we're going to have this up for a while. You can you can go back, once you get the music, go back and, and try it with us. So if you're watching this in the future. we got we got five minutes, so we're just going to keep going. So the whole, the whole idea is if you can play the tempo one, move on to tempo two. Let's keep going. So here's tempo two, a little faster. Actually, this will be easier. Yeah, I think so. Be easier. Two, and one, two, three, and. Are your clams good? Bounce. Watch the end of that roll. Got a little fuzzy on the end of the roll. Just stick with me. Make sure we got three minutes. So we're going to move on. It got better. I'll notice, I'm not going to say, there's some things, if you were paying attention earlier about how to play each rudiment, I'm watching Drew. Actually, the second time he would do things, it was better. Like the flam tap on the third line, mm -hmm. second time was better. Um, couple, there's, one, there's a couple other things I noticed, but I don't have to say it because I noticed he improved on it. So there's no point in me saying it and pointing it out. We already did, you know. You got to be your own best teacher. You are your own best teacher. So just pay attention, listen, watch, and then apply what we're doing. Slow it down, break it down, and you will be throwing it down. Let's go to tempo three. Here we go. Two, a little fast. Ready and play. And. You jumped in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You rushed the beginning of the roll, anticipating the end. We're getting near the end of the piece. This happens a lot. Yeah. You get near the end of a, of a piece, and you're kind of anticipating the end. Yeah, we're almost done. And then, because you weren't thinking about it. All we right. got one minute, but we're going to go on. Let's go. What? Let's do it. Let's do it. Tempo four. Tempo four. You ready? Two. Ready. And.
roll. Tip of five. Here we go. Two. One, two, ready, and. trouble oh we got clapping thank they you. still clapped they still clapped even though well thanks for joining us sorry about that last uh that last run on tempo five but once again i didn't practice this and i did it for I did it no for that was you. good that's good that's um, good you think you think did they play it perfect you think only they can tell us only you can only tell you us. can tell yourself remember you're the only one who gets to decide how good you are and now look there's still two more tempos to go tempo six and then Ludicrous Speed, Tempo 7, for you Jedi Masters. So hit us up on Facebook, Twitter. You can film yourself playing this. Just tag at Um Say that again. Hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can film yourself doing this, just like we're doing. We'd love to see it. Pressure's on, and we'd love to give you some feedback. And uh, that's it. So we'll see you now, next time. subscribe. Subscribe. Go to WoodyMentalDrumming.com. W O O T I M E N T A L drumming dot com and subscribe. There's tons of lessons on, on all the lessons in this book. We're going to be covering everything. We got stick visual trick. stick tricks, some beginner, some beginner lessons, all that stuff. Beginner lessons, tutorials on ancient solos, modern solos, uh, and lots more to come. We're going to be adding stuff every week. So. Get with it. Check it out. WoodyMiddleDrumming.com. Plus, lessons, all that. There's just so much stuff. You're going to have to turn them off. So. Yeah. Are we done? We're done. We're done. Thank you for watching. See y'all. Ciao.